Hello and good evening everyone. So yeah, today was the second day of planes. We had a lot, a lot of games and we had some really surprising results, some really interesting performances. Not that many crazy picks uh, in particular. Um, so yeah, let's dive straight into it. The opening match for this day was Rainbow 7 against V3. It was a it was an interesting game. Um, it was rather close. It shouldn't really be. V3 had many good things uh, going for them. Sadly, though, yeah, um, the Elise was a bit inting with her item bolts. She was rushing Morellos. Yeah, maybe you could argue there was some healing on the enemy team, but uh, especially the uh, Nidalee was really out of it. And uh, she also had a rather poor item choice. She uh, bought um, the Roar, the Rod of Ages, in the 22nd minute. So yeah, um, not much healing coming out of there. Um, note, she didn't even have an Athens before that. It was Roar after Runic Echo. So yeah, um, the Morelos being a pretty poor choice. Um, again, as we expected, we see more Twitch AD carry. And some Tristana mid, something uh, I am quite interested in. Um, if we remember last worlds, it was a relevant pick there. Then it kind of fell off in the in the normal split after worlds, and then uh, we see it again at uh, some points here and there. So I'm keeping my eyes open for that. But uh, B3 had a quite good game, uh, especially uh, pass in top lane and their mid laner uh, ace were quite uh, good where they were they were performing and uh, yeah even though it uh, took them a while uh, yeah v3 got the w in the end the next game was uh, kind of a blowout intz was super massive intz with a lot of pressure after 02 day one coming into this um yeah they had to win more or less but uh, yeah, super massive in their first game, and they started with a banger. Um, Lulu mid, interesting pick, and they had a hyper carry Hecarim comp. Um, well, Hecarim was the greatest car carry, and uh, Kakao was delivering on the pick, but uh, in my opinion, the better uh, or the most impactful player in the game was Armut. He outplayed some quite silly dives in the top lane and then um, he played the Shen really well his ult and his uh, taunts were really uh, well uh, also coordinated with his team I have to uh, talk about the Shen item build here a bit because um, we see a lot of uh, people misbuilding Shen um, not going to make a separate video for this it's not that difficult to understand so People buy Sunfire Cape on Shen, that's also not that smart. Um, you shouldn't really do that. But uh, that's a bit tolerable. But going for a t Tiamat and a Sunfire, that's just silly. So Armut was buying Titanic Hydra, which is the, uh, the correct first item to go on Shen, right? Uh, in the early game, you still have uh, decent damage uh, of your base stats. And a Titanic Hydra plays along with that. And additionally, yes, you need the wave cleared from the Tiamat and the Hydra passive. So yeah, uh, Titanic Hydra is in like 98% of the cases the correct item to go first, which is good. But then he went for a Sunfire. As I said before, this is like way too much wave clear. Like you don't need that. If your auto attacks are already killing the wave, you don't need the emulate passive of Sunfire. And uh, Sunfire, besides that and uh, like the damage you get if you taunt someone or if you CC someone, Sunfire isn't that good of a tank item. Um, it, uh, the tank stats uh, of other armor items like Randuins are way better. And that's why you should go Randuins as your tank item. Um, he went for this. That is good. But then he went for a Spirit Visage. We can talk about that here. Because he had a Lulu and a Senna on his team, so he had he he was receiving some heals, 
and spur research obviously amplifies these yields to a certain extent, meaning um, the item has some use, but usually on Shen you want to go for adaptive helmet as you have no initiate healing in your kit, um, which can be amplified. So yeah, um, wanted to talk about that a bit. For uh, INTZ, yeah, it wasn't that good. Um, in the first day, Tay in the top lane was performing, but today it wasn't. Uh, it was not it was not that great. Uh, Mikao, the AD carry, tried to play uh, a bit. Um, he played okay in lane, but then uh, in the later stages of the game, Hecarim just goes brrr, and then uh, yeah, there's nothing much he could do. Following that game. Um, we had V3 against Unicorns of Life, which was in a rather interesting game. Unicorns of Love, um, always um, known for their uh, special drafts, um, especially like back then as Vega Squadron, right? Uh, players like um, uh, Gadget, they are AD carry, or let's let's call him bot laner. He's not an AD carry; he's a bot laner. Um, and Nomads in the mid lane. Always trying crazy picks off meta stuff, which is really interesting. And uh, I guess not everyone can do that if uh, you have not the practice on these champions. You can't just blind pick like first time Oriana uh, bot lane like they did here um, because they have already prepared the pick, right? Maybe a player like uh, Perks can do this because he's also uh, a mid laner, but uh, usually an AD carry player. Uh, and he doesn't have the hours uh, spent on uh, training these champions. So, interesting picks. We got the Galio mid lane and uh, Karthus jungle from V3, our first Karthus uh, jungle pick. And yeah, Karthus wasn't really picked in solo queue, so I'm positively surprised uh, that we got to see him. And um, yeah, I have to say the team already also played quite nicely around him, like engaging. Um, just as Carthos was hitting 6, so they could use uh, his ultimate power spike immediately. Um, but V3 was uh, kinda outmaneuvered, so UL went uh, uh, answered some lane swaps. That was really interesting. So, first we had both bots at top lane, then um, UL switched uh, Oriana uh, for Camille. And then they had Camille set uh, in the top lane against V3's bot lane. Um, and they had some skirmishes here and there. It was uh, either team was getting some advantages, but then there was a greater Rift Herald fight, and V3 won the fight, getting some nice paychecks. Uh, but then sadly, they uh, throw the game. Um, they overchase and give some nice shutdowns for the enemy team. They didn't get the Rift Herald, it was uh, stolen by Ananachik. Um, so yeah, then with the shutdowns for the enemy team, the enemy team respawning, um, and especially the Kazadin getting uh, the extra gold, they were able to snowball quite hard, um, as they had no real answer for the for the Kazadin, who got uh, really really fed. Uh, Nomas was uh, hard carrying this game uh, after uh, I think two or three kills. He was just popping off. Um, I mean, yeah, there was no one really stopping him. So yeah, Nomas and uh, Boss and top lane uh, were really popping off, but Anarchic uh, in the jungle had some really nice play as well, was uh, supporting them and setting them up to carry. Sadly though, uh, we have to report uh, Sinner again. Uh, Carthus in the jungle for V3 was rushing Morellonomicon. Um, yeah, that's not okay. Don't do that. Don't waste your money. I made a video about why you shouldn't do that. Watch it if you don't know. Uh, yeah. Moving on. LGD versus R7. So LGD had a, yeah, they didn't have a good start, right? Losing against PSG in a rather uh, clumsy fashion. But, uh, yeah, most people weren't writing them off. Right? They were saying like maybe it's like first day and so on. PSG overperformed. No one was expecting them to be so good, and that's partially all everything true. But then again, we had this game today against R7, um, probably one of the worst um, wildcard teams. Not like to insult them, but others are really good, 
and there are a bunch of rookies as well. So um, yeah, we don't expect much from this team. And from what we saw before, it wasn't that great as well. Uh, yeah, against P3 and against PSG, they were losing quite convincingly. They weren't getting like, hard stomped, at least not most of the time, but it wasn't that great. They weren't really winning either. So it was really surprising that they managed to win against LGD, uh, especially after LGD had a quite solid start. Again, they get S to A plus uh, tier champions. So Lee Sin for Peanut, right? His best champion probably with Graves and Nidalee. Uh, his m most well-known champion probably the Lee Sin because of his MSI performances. Then uh, Twisted Fate for Shie, like that's his best pick. Twitch, um, like Kramer isn't known for Twitch. And maybe that showed also a bit. Um, but Twitch being a sought after pick at the moment. Uh, and then Rakan for Mark, a pick that he is more known for. So LGD getting really comfortable and really strong picks. And R7 went for a more like easy to play um, teamfight comp. Um, not really sh remembering everything. Like we had an, um, we had an Oriana and an Ezreal, um, an Renekton, something along those lines. So, um, yeah, um, she and Peanut were like, really uh, setting up a, a, a good early game. Uh, she she roaming and like, gold carding enemy targets, killing them. And Peanut, while he was dying, uh, like I think twice, uh, also was facilitating she and the bot lane. Um, yeah, everything looked well at the beginning. Um, but they were losing drakes, which is uh, not that good. But like it can happen if you have uh, such a roam-heavy mid laner that like he roams to a side lane, and then you lose mid prior, and then the enemy can uh, after the respawn get uh, to drake faster, or maybe you focus around top side and then you set uh, lose a drake. Right? It, that can happen. But uh, yeah. Um, Especially after it was uh, confirmed to be Ocean Soul, um, they still dropped Drakes, and yeah, the enemy team was able to get the Ocean Soul, which is uh, yeah, a team fight comp with an Ocean Soul. That's really that's really uh, that's really strong. Uh, but the most uh, problematic thing here is uh, not like not really LGD losing and so on, like. Maybe a loss can happen. It shouldn't be. It absolutely shouldn't. But uh, LGD was not even playing to their strengths. So uh, I think it was a Camille and a TF. So I uh, identify these champions as split push champions, not as teamfight champions. They can teamfight, right? They have abilities to do that, like to dive the back line, um, to flank. Right, they they can do that, but the enemy team had a way better team fight comp, and you have uh, the means for a split push camp. So then you should not play to the enemy strength, even if you you are theoretically you can team fight. But if the enemy is better at team fighting than you, not pl uh, not individually, right, but from their champions, and then. Um, their whole team combination, right? How these ch champions interact with each other. Um, LGD has to press tab and identify that, that the enemy wants them to team fight them. Um, and that the enemy team had not really uh, an answer for a split push if it's set up properly, right? You don't have to go for the uh, more complex 1 3 1, right? With uh, Camille and Twisted Fate in the sidelines, this could have been done. But even uh, just Camille in the sidelines and have TF with you, so uh, you have a bit more wave clear. This could have been done and could have been executed. And a team like LGD should be able to do that, especially against such a more weaker team uh, in Rainbow Seven. The fact that they did not do that is uh, is really shocking. Uh, it means that they don't even know what their champions uh, set out to do, and um, it's uh, it's quite tragic. Um, yeah, 
LG Dino O N two. Um, I'm I'm sure they won't get fifth in this group, but they can't even get first if I uh, if I'm sh if I'm sure about this. Um, I mean that doesn't mean they're out, right? But it's uh, it's really getting difficult, and I'm not even like I'm not confident anymore in them. Uh, if you remember, I had them second in in Group C. I had them over Fnatic and over TSM. If they play like this and get in Group C, they they're they're fourth. No chance. Like even Fnatic uh, who are in thing sometimes like m making these really interesting plays over aggressively, or TSM which is just a one man team. And uh, like sometimes a broken blade can snowball his lead in laning phase. Uh, sometimes speaker uh, has a good gank or something like that. Um, yeah, even these teams, uh, they know what their team comp is uh, for. And if you don't even know what your own team uh, team comp wants to do, and then even don't know what the enemy team comp wants to do, right? This is a big concept in league. Either you play to your own strengths. Or you play away from the enemy's, enemy's strength. And uh, LGD was doing neither of that. And uh, so even though some of these fights were rather close. And Kramer on uh, Twitch. He, had to, like, he did everything he could. But uh, he didn't really have the peel for uh, dealing uh, that much damage. Then uh, he, could, he hadn't that much gold to really... Uh, Kill the uh, whole enemy team, then yeah, uh, then Ocean Dre coming in, like making it even difficult, more difficult for him. Kramer did uh, did well, but uh, Peanut and uh, I'm not even sure if it's uh, like if I can say like a player like Peanut or Shia like is at fault here because it's an the whole team has to make the call like we are set out to split push. We don't team fight, right? So even if some of these players like. Uh, died in these team fights quite silly. Like I can't even say they m m misplayed mechanically. It's just uh, the the whole call to make these uh, risky team fights. It's uh, it's not smart. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm very worried about LGD. The mechanics are still very great. Like they were uh, getting ahead in lane against the uh, uh, Rainbow Seven in uh, every lane. They were like the early game was quite good, but then when it came to uh, yeah. I'm not going to repeat myself, so we're going to the next game. UL versus PSG. It's a really hype matchup, especially after LGD is uh, inting it down. Uh, these are probably the two best teams in Group B. Um, PSG after a, a really strong uh, day one, and UL after a quite convincing uh, uh, win against V3, another really solid team. Um, yeah, it uh, <laughs> was not that good for PSG. They weren't playing bad, honestly, but after pick one, uh, they were in a kind of a deficit. So P uh, UL got uh, went for another um, mage in bot lane. This time it was the Swain. This is something we saw last words from them as well, and uh, it worked out quite similar. So it's not a damage threat, but Swain with all these resources can get quite tanky. Especially with his ult and Zonias. He can stall for a lot of time and can be a really nuisance and deterrence in team fights. He just like walks into the enemy team and his base damage uh, and the damage with his like tank magic damage items is enough to have little or like a uh, concerning threat for the backline. So they have to peel away from the Swain and or like focus on him. And uh, while doing that, his team can uh, focus the enemy front line or follow up with a different engage. So Swain, uh, again, a good pick in this scenario. And the scenarios which is important, UL went for a more tanky team. Um, so uh, Oriana in mid lane with her shields, right? She can extend uh, from far back. Um, um, Set Renekton Boli, no, what, what, what did I wrote down? Oriana Renekton, uh, what else? Um, Hecarim and Swain. Um, yeah, if they play correctly and if they're not like uh, uh, set behind in the early game, these champions are rather tanky in the mid game. Um, and uh, PSG went for the standard comp, right? 
set um, a woolly bear and echo engine as well so these champions don't do that much damage against tanks they're burst champions right like okay a set is even um, like mid lane set is more of a off tank bruiser right he does his damage because he's tanky right he does damage over time uh, and he can continue to do so because he doesn't die that's how he does his damage also um, with his true damage right but it's also uh, more for uh, squishy targets same goes for echo or Jin. they're not good against tanks so PSG was baiting them probably with uh, leaving Echo and set open. PSG would go, go for these picks again. And they played these picks uh, quite good, right? Um, Kong Yoon and Uniboy were not mechanically um, uh, uh, faltering, but their champions weren't uh, as effective as in the games before. Uh, same goes for the, the Jin on D. D was really trying his best, he was uh, really solid in the game, uh, not really overly aggressive, but he had no chance, like the, the Hecarim uh, um, and the Oriana were really destroying him. So yeah, um, also Kong Yoon got outsmited multiple times, and in top lane, I don't know what happened there, uh, PSG got Volibear into Renekton. And we already discussed on this channel two times that Woolly Bear is good against Renekton and then the Woolly Bear is like 20-25 CS down in, in like 7-8 in minutes. That's that's really bad. Uh, that can't happen. So uh, yeah, PSG was a bit outclassed in draft and in uh, some positions. Um, their early fights were in their favor, right? The enemy team wasn't that tanky yet. So uh, that damage was still sticking and relevant, but afterwards wasn't looking that great for them. So UOL picked up win against uh, the 2-0 team. So coming to the last two games, super massive against Matt, and that's another upset, right? So UOL against PSG, you can somewhat say this is an upset, but I wouldn't really. I uh, before uh, playing started, I had UOL as the second uh, team in this group. Um, so I was. I was not too surprised with that result. Um, and then we had uh, Rainbow 7 over LGD. And this is a super massive winning against Mad Lions. And this was the whole team of uh, Super Massive was doing quite good. So um, my favorite, uh, or like my highlight players were Armut and Snowflower. Snowflower. And also Sidenote was holding his own and then later in the game was uh, doing relevant damage. Early game was not that uh, solid though. Bululu was doing some questionable plays. Kakao was caught uh, uh, a bit at some points, but overall he was uh, was solid jungling. Um, and then uh, Armut was set up in top lane. And um, yeah, I think he was playing the the monkey, the Wukong. Uh, was really good on him. Uh, he was able to push his lead quite well. And yeah, later then in the mid game, Bululu stabilized the mid lane and then even had some really nice uh, Azir shuffles in the, in the later stages, uh, turning some team fights quite wild. Snowflower and Side Knot stepping up, pushing Shadow, punishing Shadow, and uh, especially Humanoid was punished heavily by Snowflower again and again. Um, yeah, Leona's quite good against Zoe. If, uh, yeah, if played correctly. And, yeah, even after getting caught uh, in a rather bad fight, super massive, then with a 9k gold line lead, stomped uh, Mad Lions in the last team fight, pushing for the win. Overall, yeah, Armut really performed, a whole of super massive, turned up their play as the game went on. Um, not much to, so uh, to say about drafting, no picks in that game. It was, like, solid and, uh, Nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, last game of the day, TL versus Legacy Esports. Um, Legacy picked AD, uh, AD carry of bot lane Zix. It's really nice to see. Uh, Zix, a uh, really strong bot laner in my opinion. 
and uh, a bit more standard than the Oriana and the Swain. Uh, but for, sadly for Legacy, even though they uh, they had a win on the board against IMTD from yesterday, uh, today wasn't their day for a 2-0. Um, yeah, it was a team gap all over, um, especially in mid. Uh, Broxa and Jensen really punished uh, Tali on uh, Lucian. And the Lucian that is set behind, uh, yeah, it was free gold. <laughs> Broxa took that gold, like got 3 0 or something like that, uh, but was mostly uh, Jensen. Uh, just Broxa was getting up the kill, uh, picking up the kills. And then, still with that lead, Broxa was like snowballing that across the map, uh, and then turning to bot lane and even giving in impact some love in the top lane, who was again on tank duty. Um, even though the highlight players of this game were Jensen and Broxner, Impact and Tactical were all also like, ahead. They had uh, Tactical had a uh, had a uh, good CS lead, and Impact was uh, solo killing uh, Tali at some point. But uh, well, that is kind of expected. Uh, Orn is really OP, <laughs> has not changed much, and uh, yeah, in uh, like all 25 mid lane uh, Lucian, yeah, he can't really step up to Orn. So yeah. So TL gets their uh, second victory for Group A. So we have a quick standing upgrade uh, update. In group A, in first place we have TL and Supermassive. Then in third we have Legacy Esports, followed by Mad in fourth. E INTZ in fifth currently. Please note, uh, both first uh, first place teams have already uh, been qualified, so they're not out of words. So TL and Supermassive can't be fifth. Is what that means uh, in general. So they are not first set, they are not second set, they are just not fifth. Um, so in Group B we have UL in first, followed by PSG, followed by uh, V3. Uh, V3. Uh, after that we have Rainbow Seven, and in last place LGD. Note in Group B nothing is set yet, no one is qualified, uh, and no one is out yet. So. For MVP positioning, um, I think we had many exceptional uh, players today who were uh, playing uh, great games. So I'm going to mention the top MVP and then some like the second best. Uh, for example, in the top lane, I had thought uh, Armut from Supermassive was really popping off today. Uh, had a re had really strong games, really showing up uh, with different playstyles and so on. Uh, and sec in the second best top laner I thought today was uh, UL's boss, uh, although he was not the highlight player of his team in most games, um, he was still pu pushing his leads, contributing uh, to team fights rather creatively, and uh, yeah, playing solid, getting their leads. In jungle, I have uh, UL's Ananas, uh, yeah, Ahajik, uh, followed by TL's Broxa. Uh, while Broxa had a really strong game, I felt Ahachik was a more of a facilitator but rather than uh, being facilitated. Um, unlike Broxa, who was uh, picking up what Jensen uh, prepared for him. Not flaming Broxa here, he did what he had to do and then he did his job well, but I felt uh, Ahachik was doing more for the team. Also, it helps if you play two games. Um, then you, I have more to go around with, unless like if you play one game, that's then a bit difficult. Uh, unless you're uh, Team Liquid's Jensen, uh, you're my, uh, he's my first uh, MVP in mid lane. Um, his game was just really strong, pushing his leads mechanically was really solid. CS leads, like uh, even though Oriana is one of the mages that can do okayish against Lucian mid. Um, it's still a bit more Lucian favored if the Lucian is good. If the Lucian is good, he wins nearly every matchup mid lane, right? But um, he was uh, winning in this uh, rather hard one matchup quite convincingly. So yeah, he gets uh, the, the first. Even though the second UL Nomans had a really strong uh, game, especially his Kassadin game, he was popping off. I mean, yeah, the enemy team had, had nothing against him, and at some point he was like trying to fountain dive before the game uh, was really, really over. Um, but, uh, yeah, still strong uh, performance from him. Um, kind of interested in what he picks, uh, what he picks up next. Please note, Kassadin is not a really uh, unusual pick for him. Uh, he's 
the, the player worldwide who plays the most Cassadine and pro play. So yeah, it's a it's a really uh, uh, important pick for him. An AD carry and the support. I have the bot main of Super Massive again. Side note and uh, Snowflower. Uh, side note, uh, or like the AD carry position was not at spectacle uh, spectacular today. Um, we had not uh, any really pop off from that position. Um, you could uh, argue for Gadget, but I didn't think he was uh, what was that outstanding. Uh, his picks were really good, but uh, his performance was uh, just solid. I say uh, he would be in the third for uh, for bot lane or AD carry for me, but uh, the other two were better. I feel like and Snowflower was really uh, setting up. Um, uh, in the win against Mad Lions, and even in the win before that, um, he was doing uh, rather fine. Um, uh, in the second position for AD Carry, I have Kramer, um, even though his team lost uh, rather convincingly due to poor decision making, uh, his personal performance was still outstanding. He had really good kiting in the team fights, even though he got one shot uh, in the last one. Um, I have to say it didn't matter. Um, they would have lost either uh, either way um, because they would just lose every team fight unless something really miraculously happens. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to uh, just take uh, everything he did on that one misplay. And uh, for the uh, support, I have PSG Kai Wing. Even though PSG was uh, losing today. Um, I thought his position, uh, his play was really good again. Um, the bot lane was fine for them, and I felt his roams uh, were quite effective. And then later, um, he was doing what needed. Didn't make a real diff uh, difference because the whole team comps were just so misaligned. Yeah. The overall MVP for, for me today is uh, Supermassive Armut. Um, two great day the games, as I said before. Before he showed different playstyles, flanking, engage, engaging, and um, he got early leads uh, in both games. He was set up from his team, um, but then how he used them, he snowballed them uh, in the side lane, or he pushed them into the team fights through flanks and really strong engages. So yeah, I like how he uh, handled that. Um, was really pop off performance today. Uh, I have to say Jensen is close behind him though. This game was really strong. And uh, yeah, we have to be on lookout. Jensen's performances were quite good. My honorable mention overall for the MVPs would be uh, M uh, Victory. Damn it. V3's pass. Um, although his team lost again today, uh, he really played good and um, had a nice showing uh, in the top lane. Um, yeah, it was against UL, so uh, yeah, the team um, in other lanes and in, in the team fights were just outclassed. UL is a really strong team. Don't underestimate them. Uh, they only lost like two uh, two games or so this year. Um, yeah, they're really strong. Even last Worlds, uh, they nearly made it. I think, I think they were the team that uh, lost two to three against Splice in planes last year. So yeah, don't underestimate this team. Uh, past performance against them was quite good. So that wraps up the uh, second day uh, review. It's really late uh, um, today. Uh, there was a lot going on, so excuse me for that. Um, yeah, but we're getting it a bit earlier tomorrow. So yeah, stay safe and uh, yeah, see you around till then.